In this series of videos, we're going to be doing some major rust repair on the core support for my dad's 69 C10. I'm not going to use any patch panels. I'm going to make my own repair panels. I've got about 8 to 10 hours of content on these repairs. I know that's a lot of content. I'm going to have to break it up into about you know 8 or 10 different videos, about an hour, 45 minutes to an hour long. And I know a lot of you folks get bored with long videos, but then there's also a lot of you that like the long videos, you know, to go into more details. Um, I'm not showing every minute of every, you know, repair, everything I'm doing, but it is pretty detailed. I show quite a bit. Um, so just let me know in the comments if you like that or you don't like that, you know, what you think about it. Because um, I, I'm just kind of shooting in the dark here and, Hoping this is something you guys like. I know a lot of you, you know, want to see more detailed stuff. So, um, I, that's what I'm going to try to do. And we'll just see how it works out. So, like I said, just let me know what you think. And if you like it, don't like it. And as usual, thanks for being here. And I uh, hope you get something out of it. Thank you. Well, on today's video, and maybe, uh, this one and a couple more, I'm not exactly sure yet. We're going to turn these rusty parts and this core support, which will be here somewhere, wherever I decide to put it. We're going to repair the core support for the 69 Chevrolet C10. And we're going to repair it and wind up looking like this. This is the core support done. I started this repair back in the winter. Well, late spring or early early spring sometime in the spring finally got it finished so I'm trying to put this video together finally anyhow 69 C10 um, this was my dad's truck for what 40 plus years um, I have to do the math in my head but yeah a long a long time uh, my dad and my mom both as I said before both passed away in 2014 so this truck is mine now mine and my brother's even though it's in my possession um, he likes to think it's his as much as I do <laughs> um, but anyway I'm doing a lot of repair on it it's rust repair and you're going to paint it at some point uh, so I, I, I'll probably I'll keep referring to this truck as my dad's truck even though it is mine I mean um, it's mine now, but but uh, it's to, I still call it my dad's truck, and I, I probably always will. So anyhow, we're going to be working on that. This is the core support for dad's truck. I got it outside so the lights kind of screw up. Um, got a fair amount of rust repair to do. This is on the core support, support at the bottom, along across the middle. Um, it's not horrible, but it's not good either. So it's definitely got to be repaired. This this one mount over here is, is kind of much gone. It should be sitting right in here. That's gone. I'm gonna have to uh, repair that, fix that. This whole bottom side here is gone. You can see on the good side, there's supposed to be a bracket here, or not a bracket, but the bottom flange. You got the sun shade. Bottom flange. Um, that's all gone on this side. So I got to replace all that make some parts um, there's not really anything available from the aftermarket there is one piece I tried to order and the company I ordered it from um, we won't talk about who they are but they uh, they did me wrong um, so anyway I gotta make this stuff all from scratch so it won't be that bad it won't be that you know, it's not nothing easy um, and it's all thicker metal too 16 gauge maybe a piece of 14 in here somewhere but anyway um, right now I just got it outside to do some sandblasting. I'm going to get it all sandblasted um, before I start working on it. Plus the weather here in the south is still nice. It's not, hadn't got too hot yet to sandblast. When it gets really hot, sandblasting is a, is a miserable task. Anyhow, that's what we're doing today. Here's a core support to Dad's truck after some sandblasting. You can see the channel here where all the, the rust is rusted out. That's one one layer of the core support. It's also got this inner flange here. It's another layer. There's a third layer where this bracket on this side, which is over here, I cut off because I've got a it's rusted out. 
really bad. Got to I've got to replace or repair this. This is the mount for the radiator. These aren't, I can't buy these anywhere. So I'll have to wind up repairing this as well. Um, all that rust damage. It's not as bad as it looks. I mean, it's not good, but I, I'll be able to repair it. The one spot I don't, I, the one spot I'm really worried about as far as having to make the test, make the repair patch for is this piece on the other side has this nice curve right here um, I've got some cup I got a couple ideas about how to how to come close it won't be perfectly matched to factory but I'll do as best as I can so I've got to make I basically got to make a piece like this that's all the way flat over here in the L shape with this bracket or this bend back down in here and the bolts nuts rather for the inner fender there's three of them so I got to make all this to go replace all this I know you folks that don't do sheet metal work and look at that saying it was just like no mm -mm, you're not gonna do that well yeah we are we'll get it done why am I, why am I z there I'm hitting the zoom button the whole time so there's I gotta remake all I gotta make a mate to this or the other side to go into here and place all that. I know a lot of you are saying, no, you can't do that. Yeah, we can. We can do it. Um, so anyway, um, we'll get some more work done. And fabbing the pieces for the core support, I needed to bend the piece of 16 gauge. That, that piece there is 30 inches long. My, my brake won't bend 16 gauge metal that long. So what I did was cut it in half, bend it in two sections, and then use my table and a piece of tubing as a fixture, welded it back, cranked it together and welded it back together. Certainly not the cleanest solution, but it definitely will work. Um, some of you eagle eyes will notice I'm using galvanized for a couple of reasons. One, I don't I was out of regular 16 gauge. I thought I had a sheet of 16 or a partial sheet left, and I don't. I did have this 16 gauge galvanized for something else I was going to use it on and didn't. And with the price of steel nowadays, it, made, it didn't make sense to go buy something else when I got this galvanized sitting here. Plus, galvanized for that bottom, that core support is perfect anyway. You just ha I just have to be careful welding because, you know, galvanized puts off toxic fumes, so you have to be careful. That's that. So I, I'm not sure, but I will be cutting this section here out for sure. And the inside as well. You can see these holes. I did it in stages so I wouldn't be cutting off all the structure of the bottom. I would, if I did, I would lose my radiator location, mount location, and my core support bolt hole location. I would lose all those reference points. We have to measure and mark and you know do a lot of stuff to get it back. So I just I decided just to do it in stages. Plus, I, I can't bend pieces this long anyway. Not out of 16, or I certainly couldn't, I only, I only have a four foot break. I couldn't even break a piece wide enough for the whole thing anyway. So I'm just doing it in sections. Um, not the best way to do it, but it certainly will work. Nobody will ever know it but me once I get finished. So the next thing I'm doing is fairing up the piece that goes in here, which is the, you know, the, the mate to this section. I was able to salvage this area here that wasn't rusted through luckily which kept my radiator pad mounts um, I had to cut the back side off you can see so I'll be scabbing into it like this um, welding that up back together well, I've marked out the pieces I'm going to be fabbing they're here got a bend I think I can do both bends as a bend up here and a bend on this two flanges here and again I had to cut it in half I can't bring I can't break 30 inches on my break so that's what we're doing now.
no, no, no. One flange. The other one I believe I can roll into it. I just wanted to double check a measurement on my on my core support. Looks good. Can't turn all of it, but I got I got most of it. I'll have to I'll have to finish the rest by hand, which is no easy task. But that's what I'm gonna have to do. pan brake. Pan brake allows you to bend flanges like this. Yeah. All right, well, I have to finish it by hand with a hammer. Yeehaw. That being the other half before I start cutting and Use my reference. It's easy to go over if you ain't careful. I went over. Not quite, not too much. More than that, though. That is close, though. That's really close. I overbent just the fuzz. Pull it back. With 16 gauge, that's not easy to do without bending it. Making a mess. I still ain't moving in. Want to get some extra leverage. So hold on right quick. 
had to gain some leverage. It's real important. There's a thing called bend radius when you bend something. It's how much of the metal, you know, rolls over and curls, curves, bends. It's really important that you take account for that, especially in thicker metals. Like you're trying to duplicate or match a curve. If you bend on the wrong side of either your mark or where you think the bend's going to be, you're going to wind up having a different width. And whatever you're bending, if I did this right, then these these will match up. I sure hope I got it right. Perfect. So yeah, just make sure you bend on the same side of your line for your marks. Whether you're using a sharpie, a scribe, whatever. Just keep track of that. I'm not sure you can see, but here's here's the here's one piece bent. Turn the flange on the front that I got to finish. That I got to finish turning up 90 degrees by hand. And of course the other side. Come on camera, where are you? There you are. Right there. I took took this piece and finished folding that flange over by hand. So now I've got two 90s. It's not exactly perfect, but it's it, it'll work for this core support. I mean, it's pretty darn good, honestly. Um, I still got to take this one and finish folding the flange over. But first, I got to figure out how I'm going to section this into this. This fits here, basically. Um, but this this has to section into it to give my radiator mounts and stuff a place. So what I'm doing now is marking and measuring how I want to cut and section this together. And that can be a lot of, you know, slow, tedious, you know, work. But that's what I'm doing. I'm going to roll this flange over with a spoon. That way I won't have any bad hammer marks in my, in my flange. The spoon, you know, protects the metal from hammer marks. This is not the best way, perfect way to do this, but I don't really have a choice. It kind of, it bent the bottom. I'll have to fix that back, but that's... It's pretty close to square. The main thing now is to make sure it matches up with the other piece, which it probably Right now, probably does not. Luckily, I've got this bench at the right size. Dolly. It definitely curled it some. 
which I don't like at all. And this may be hard to get out, unfortunately. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. That's, that's closer. Yeah, that's close. I've got to weld these two together. They, they've got to fit. They're just a little bit off, but I can... I can make it work. Luckily it's not it's not real bad. It's off a little. For sure. But I can I can make it work. There's nothing magic about doing this. It's just a matter of cutting and fitting and measuring and all that good stuff till you get it where you want it to be. just the way I prefer to do it. So anyway, I'll keep cutting and fitting and come back when we get this thing pretty close. I've got to form, I've got to form this curve right here in my new piece. Actually, I'm sorry, it's out here, right here, where I'm going to splice together. So what I did was cut, cut this down, and then I need my pivot point to be right here, the bend. So I'm going to use these uh, channel locks which is kind of caveman, but it should work. And then get in here and just ease, just gradually fold that out. Now I want about a 45, but I won't know exactly how much I need till I have it on here. That's, that's, that's in the ballpark. And then I'm, you can see there's a hole here. I'll have to, I'll have to fill this in with, with more metal, more material. But that, that got that started. Of course, it, when I bend it, it curls, which is not uncommon. That's better. Roll it back up. So that's, that's a start. It's definitely not perfect yet, but it's a start. So I'm still working on getting these two. You can see. You can see we're getting there. Where, where this is going to sit. They got the new piece, the old piece. They're going to merge together like that when I get finished. We're getting there.
Well, the battery died again while I was welding. I've got I got this welded up, all put together. This seam here, I had to roll the edge down, um, and then I've got it. I cut it where I made it, right here. Then I'm gonna cut a pie piece, triangle piece, whatever. I've already cut somewhere. So that piece will go. We go in here, well the hole up, so you can see. So that'll finish that'll finish this area up right here. So that's what I'm about to do next. Once I get them all clamped to the bench, not so much this time to keep it from moving when I well, just to keep it from moving when I'm working on it. It'll bounce around if I don't. Sometimes to figure out that yeah, that's better. Right. This is just a matter of just kind of piecing this together, and tagging it in, then welding, welding it up. Again, with the rusty metal, you got to be careful and try to burn through. This, what I've got left here is actually pretty solid. I cut pretty much all the pinholes out. I'm still stitch welding though to keep them burning, burning through. I got the heat up pretty hot to get good penetration on the weld. So I don't want to burn through. If I stay in one spot long, it's going to burn through with that trigger down. If I wasn't welding rusty metal, I wouldn't have to worry about it so much. But you got to be careful. See, I had to really stick to that corner because it was definitely thin. Alright. 
So I'm not sure how good you can see it, but there we are. Welded up. Welded up. I just got to grind it now. And nobody will ever know it's done but me and you. <laughs> Here's the piece all welded together. Went down, down. Dressed up, ready for the ball, ready to go to dinner. Um, it looks pretty good. I mean, you can see the seam on the bottom, but nobody's ever going to see that anyway. I could put some filler in it, which I'm not, to, to hide that. But you never would know that spliced together now unless you saw the inside. I'm not going to grind the inside. I, I ground it a little bit. It's never going to be seen. Only here, it's going to be covered up. Um, let's see kind of dark back this way I mean I you could look down in there I guess and see it from the top side so maybe I will grind it some some more I just realized that you kind of can see it with the radiator out of there so I probably will grind that some more but anyway that's that's that section done now I got to do the other section hold on I got to fab the other half now which is going to sit right here which basically is this this piece right here I've got to bend I got to make this curve on the end I got to put the nuts in it for the for the uh, inner fender um, over here I still got to cut the hole I had to cut the hole for the radiator mount or the core support mount so we're definitely not done here I got to I'll cut this flange back once I get everything welded as you see, it's, you know, it's too tall now, but it made it easier to bend with a big, taller flange. This will get, this will get, uh, I'll get this in shaped and figure out how I'm going to make that turn down. I got a couple, couple ideas. And once I get all that done, I'll put it back on the bench, weld it together in the middle, and it'll be one solid piece. And then we'll be just about ready to weld it on. I am going to pre-prime under here with, with epoxy primer before I weld it all back together. I like to do it but that's that's not gonna be for several more days I just welded this uh, the that side the extension on um, just like I did the other one clamped it to the bench used a piece of pipe or steel tubing square tubing as a fixture just welded that got this in notched here to start making that little turn down it's this little turn down it's on the other side So that's what we're working on now is getting this piece finalized. Then I'll be able to get it all primed up and ready to weld it in. I have this bottom right side of the core support uh, clamped in and test fit. I've got a mark out for my holes I have to drill for the core support mount. There's three holes here for the inner fender. I've got some clearance holes, access holes. Um, I've still got to round, up, round over the end here and weld it up. But it's clamped in place. A couple things I got to clean up in here. You know, got to still got to weld up this end over here. But it's clamped in place, so that much is done. That's good. I still have to fix up. There was a hole right here. I'm not sure what happened here. Something had cut through. I got to cut that out, fix that. This flange up here had rusted away. You can see what's left of it here and a little bit here. So I got to put a piece in right there. There was a hole here cut for the AC hose. That they added. I'm not sure where I'm going to run my whole, my AC line, so I'm going to weld that hole up so I can drill them wherever I decide I want to put them. Just right now, I have no idea, and I won't until I get out there and try it. So, best just to weld it up. So, that's what we're doing for now. We're getting ready to prep um, some more fitment. I've marked out the center holes that I've got for the hole type of drill. That's the core support mount and the three holes. You can barely see them. There's three pilot holes. There they are. Three holes here for the inner fender mounts. So I'm going to drill these out. And then uh, got to dress a little spot right here for an access hole. Nothing big. It's just more cosmetic than anything. So that's what we're doing now.
got to cut a plug to fill that hole in the core support. So I set up a hole saw and a fence. The hole saw out the pilot, which should uh, should work just fine. This could be a little tricky doing it by without clamping this, but I think I'll be all right as long as I'm careful. I got a fence. That's the main thing. Stop from moving is is a, is a fence to hold it in place. So we're gonna see what happens. Yeah, that wasn't good. Alright, not gonna work. I need to clamp it somehow. It would have worked if I didn't have if I had the pilot in it. But I didn't want the pilot bit because that's the extra hole I gotta weld back up. We'll try this. It may not work, but we'll try it. If I can get the clamp on there, it'll hold it. Your power hole as well as it. So it's going to change out. Put the pilot back in my bit, drill bit, hole saw. I've done that before, it would work fine if I had a bigger piece of clamp to so it wouldn't move around. This, this little small piece is not going to cooperate. I have to just weld up a whole quarter inch hole, no biggie. Thank you. 
clamp in. I'll probably be able to get one. See if you can see. So, whoops, still hot too. Um, that's still hot. Well, there's my there's my plug. All I gotta do is weld up that corner. It's hole in the middle, which won't be any problem. I don't want to have to do it, but it is what it is. All right, that's the end of part one. That's almost 45 minutes. That's pushing, pushing the length of the videos I'd like to be doing. So we got some stuff fabricated. Still got obviously a long way to go. So the next part, we'll do some more fabricating, do some more welding, put some pieces together, and just keep making progress. So once again, like I said, thanks for looking in. Hope you're learning something. Hope you're enjoying it. If you like it, hit the little subscribe button. I I feel funny saying that. I've been watching guys say it for years now. I got to say it too. So hit the little subscribe button, uh, leave a comment, tell me if you like it. Um, so anyway, thanks a lot, and I will catch you on the flip side.